Frank. I heard you were testifying today. And you rushed right over here to give me your support? No. The prosecution's called me as an expert witness. How can they do that? You were Julie's psychiatrist. In certain cases, the doctor-patient privilege is waived. Oh, remind me never to spill my guts to you. I don't like it. But Julie didn't leave me any choice. I'm sure you don't like testifying against her either, unless you're planning to slant the testimony in her favor. I'm going to tell the truth. Julie's sick. She shouldn't be out there walking around. The end. Well, looks like you and me finally have something in common other than being stepbrothers. Glad to hear it. Frank. Courtney, what are you doing here? Well, somebody's got to keep you from wrecking our lives. I found a surprise under my pillow last night. Was it a visit from the tooth fairy? Mm, only if she was your messenger. Thank you. When you're locked in a place like Ferncliff, something as simple as a note can be like a lifeline. Mm. Did you fill out the questionnaire? And I will let you see it as soon as you tell me how you smuggle things into my room. <laughs> hey, don't let him get to you. Well, I chose him as my shrink because I thought he could understand me better than anyone. How could I have been so wrong? I'll just, just forget about him. You gotta focus on Frank, okay? He's up first. Now, I want you to think, is there anything we could use to break his testimony? I haven't spoken with Frank in months. Since you accused him of stealing your money? Well, we both played a lot of mind games. But deep down, he cared. Maybe his testimony won't be all that bad. Okay, who are you and where's my wife? A what? The optimist? Yeah. Why not? If Frank won't come over to our side on his own, maybe you can get him to reconsider his testimony the way you did with Courtney. I wish it were that easy. Unfortunately, Frank holds grudges. Glad you made it. I got out of my meeting as soon as I could. Good, come in. Yeah. You know, your message sounded urgent. It's something new with DV? A no. Condition change? No, no, no. Nothing like Scott, that. Scott, it's nothing wrong with Lucy or the kids, is it? No, 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 no. Everything's fine. Well, what is it then? I'm gonna make you an offer you can't refuse. Let's get to it. What's this offer I can't refuse? Okay. I think that we should be in partnership together. Baldwin and Baldwin? Yes. Sounds great. It's a little sudden, isn't it? Well, no. <laughs> Let's look at this way. I can help with your caseload. I mean, ever since Bordizo's goons beat you up and your surgery... Oh, well, look, I'm, I'm not 100% yet. That's <laughs> the beauty of it. You can sit back, take it easy. I'll do all the work. Sounds like you got this all worked out, Scott. Yes, I do. We can go into the Baldwin building. It's half... Full right now. We can take the top floor over. Uh, look, let's, let's just slow down here a minute. Uh, All right, we don't have to go into the Baldwin building. We'll go someplace else. No, no, that isn't it. Uh, Where, do you remember that little space we had when I got out of law school? Of course I do. We had some interesting times well, there. Well, we can have more interesting times. I've got the agreement all drawn up here. Scott. Listen, uh, it, uh, don't worry. I've given you top billing. Baldwin no, and Baldwin. Uh, Scott, stop it now, please. I, I know what you're doing. And my answer's no. Frank, if you get up there and you, and you go on like Julie is the second coming of Lizzie Borden, Chris will tell the world that Neil is your son and not Joe's. I am not changing my testimony to help Julie like you did. I don't want her to get off. Neither do I. But in the long run, it, it won't make any difference the way either one of us testifies. The prosecution has tons of stuff against her. You don't know that. You're taking a hell of a chance. Yeah. 
Well, I will do anything to protect Neil. He is weak, and he is vulnerable. And if it comes out that Joe is not his father, it could really hurt him. I thought you cared about him, too. Don't you dare. Not after everything I've done for my son. I love Neil, and you know it. But don't do this to him. Forget it, Courtney. Chris Ramsey can play emotional blackmail all he wants, so can you. I'm still telling the truth. I know you'll do the right thing. Or Neil. Dr. Locke. Kevin. I thought you would have been here yesterday. Surprised I'd missed the opening day of testimony, huh? Yes, very much so. Well, I was busy. Doing some investigating. <laughs> Something to do with the trial? The trial? And you. Me. Still uh, digging into my background, are you? Well, I'm just so darn fascinated with you. There's so much we don't know. I already told you. All you had to do was ask. Or is part of the pleasure the hunt? Something like that. I'm just afraid once you ferret out all my secrets, you're going to be very disappointed. Kevin. Hi, it's good to see you. Sarah, good to see you, too. If you'll excuse me, I'm going to have a word with Julie's attorney before we start. Sure. There. I understand things didn't go so well yesterday. Oh, um, well. Courtney Canelo suddenly remembered that Julie wasn't standing next to the body, but actually kneeling, trying to help. Curious how witnesses keep changing their testimony to help Julie. Yeah. First Cooper, now Courtney. I wonder why that is. Wish I knew. just might. Why be so negative? Frank cared about me. Yeah, but you're Mrs. Chris Ramsey now. And there's no one Frank hates more than me. <sighs> Julie, we're almost ready to start. Is Frank still scheduled to be up first? Yes. And we have very high hopes for Mr. Scanlon. Meaning? To put it mildly, we're going to mop the floors with him. Why are you against this? I'm a good lawyer. Yeah, of course you are. Uh, okay, so my reputation's been a little sketchy. No, no, you, your reputation is not the issue here. Well, then what's wrong? We'd make a good team. What's wrong is that you just found out that David Bordiso is your biological father. So? Big deal. So whenever anything overwhelming hits you, Scott, you go into free fall. Like, like when Laura left you. You took off from Mexico. And when Dominique died, you suddenly get engaged to Catherine Bell. Well, let's not forget Canada, then. Thank you for pointing out all of my mistakes. Oh. Look, I'm just trying to point out a pattern, Scott. I mean, this David Bordiso business, you can't dismiss with, with, with just a wave of your hand. Or, or this sudden newfound determination to, to go back to something you and I once had. I mean, you got to take time to process this information. It's meaningless information. No, no, no. Once you have done that, then you'll be free to do anything you want. Which is to go and practice with you. Exactly. Well, that's what I want to do. And I'm going to want to do that in six months from now. What about all this pro bono work you've been talking about doing? Yes, I still want to do that. Well, we can do it together. We can help a lot of people. Scott, you don't have to prove that you're a good person. I'm not doing that. Yes, you no, are. No, I'm... You're doing everything you possibly can to prove you're not David Bordiso's son. Now, why don't you just admit it? How long have you known the defendant? Two years, a little more. At one time, you had a very close relationship with her, didn't you? In fact, you were lovers. Yes. On the night John Canellos was murdered, you and the defendant were on a date, were you not? That's right. 
Would you describe for us what was going on that night? It was Halloween, and we went to a big costume party. And did it appear to you that Julie was having fun? Objection. The witness is not qualified to judge her state of mind. Overruled. I think the witness was close enough to the defendant to know whether or not she was enjoying herself. Mr. Scanlon? Not really. She was kind of on edge. Well, did anything in particular happen that make you believe that she was not having a good time? At one point, she, she said it felt like the walls were closing in on her. She said she had to go outside for some air. Mm. And did she? Yes. Did you go with her? No, she went by herself. I went outside later looking for her, but I, I couldn't find her anywhere. But you did finally come across her? Yes. She was in the funhouse standing over the dead body of John Canellos. She wasn't kneeling, trying to revive him? No. Well, sounds like her claim that she needed some fresh air was all a lie. Objection! Counsel is editorializing. Sustained. Miss Jensen, keep in mind Mr. Scanlon is the one offering the testimony here, not you. I'm sorry, Your Honor. How did Julie appear to you when you found her standing over the body? She was upset. Like... she was really freaked out about what she'd done. Objection! The witness had no knowledge that she had done anything. Sustained. The witness's last statement is to be stricken from the record. Like it matters now, they can't erase it from their minds. Thank you, Mr. Scanlon. You were very helpful. No more questions. We're not finished with Frank Scanlon yet. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Janet! Hey, you lunkhead. Guess who's back to terrorize them all? You need me. It's Janet from another planet. <laughs> You're talking about the safety of your daughter. I'll never let anybody touch Amanda. I'll kill... There's the Janet I know. She's back. All My Children, ABC Daytime. In the statement you gave police on the night in question, there is not one word that indicates that you felt that the defendant had murdered John Canellis. At the time, I didn't think that she'd done it. Oh, so you, you changed your mind? Yes. It all became clear to you? That's right. But on that night, you said that you didn't believe that Julie was even capable of murder. Right. And that you cared for her deeply. Yes. And then the relationship ended, and then you just changed your mind. Objection. Defense is putting words in the witness's mouth. Sustained. Mr. Leopold. Sorry, Your Honor. Just out of curiosity, uh, Mr. Scanlon, what were you doing that night when Julie stepped out to get some air? I don't remember exactly. So you can tell us in detail what Julie was doing, but you can't recall what you were doing. That's right. Let me help you out. You let Julie go out there alone so that you could score an illegal drug called DL-56. Objection irrelevant. Applies to the witness state of mind on the night in question, Your Honor. If his judgment was clouded because of drugs, the jury has a right to know that. I'll allow it. The witness will answer the question. DL-56 was a medication I was taking for a while. Ah. And this medication wasn't approved by the FDA, was it? No. And you were, in fact, addicted to it, weren't you? No, not really. It were you or were you not under the influence of an illegal, mind-altering drug on the night that John Canellis was murdered? The only reason I was taking it was because Chris Ramsey made sure I stayed hooked. Oh, so you're testifying here that because of your hatred of Dr. Ramsey, who incidentally married the woman that you once loved... Objection! The witness is not on trial. Do you expect I'll the jury to take the word of a drug addict who Objection. holds a grudge against the defendant's Objection. husband? Objection! Withdraw the question. I have nothing else for this witness. You're excused, Mr. Scanlon. We'll take a short recess, return in 15 minutes. I'll rise.
Oh, first one out the door. All set to rub it in? No, Frank. I came off looking like some lying junkie in there. You must be thrilled. Well, I have to admit, I'm glad your testimony didn't bury Julie. But I don't like what Darren Leopold did in there. I could see how much it was hurting you, and I hated it, Frank. I really did. This is how you always play it. You ask me to do something I don't want, and then when things somehow go your way, you're all sugar. Well, why are you blaming me for what happened I am in just there? sick of you doing anything to get what you want. Sure, you, you feel bad that I got raked over the coals in there, but you are as happy as hell that Chris Ramsey got what he wanted. Anything to keep your little secret, right, Courtney, including lying on the stand. That is so unfair. Yeah, well, things are tough all over. Maybe Bordizo had something to do with the timing of this, but I still want to be in partnership with you. Well, I have been thinking about that since the first day you started law school. Well, then let's forget about Bordizo. I mean, what's, what's stopping us? Probably because we're both so stubborn, we'd end up arguing about what color our yellow pad should be. Blue. <laughs> Come on, we can work that stuff out. Well, I'm sure we can. But not until the time is right. Or Diesel. Again and again, he's ruining my life. Yeah. You're confused here, and I wish I knew what to tell you, but I'd, I don't have all the answers. I don't know how you're going to resolve this business with DV, but I know you will. Yes, I will. Hello? Scott, it's Kevin. I need your help. What can I do? What's up? Well, the trial's going very well for Julie. Hold on a second, Kevin. It's Kevin. He's at uh, Julie's trial. Well, how's it going? Well, it's going well for her. All right, you take that. I got to go downtown, take a deposition. We'll continue this conversation later. Okay, partner. <laughs> Kevin, how can I help you? I need you to connect with Rachel Locke. Find out anything that you can. About? Her. As in, why is she so determined to see Julie get free? I'll do what I can. Well, could you make it happen? This trial's gonna be over soon. And from the sound of it, Julie's about to be acquitted again. Which would be fine if we knew she was innocent. Yeah, but we don't. Well, I'm on it. I'll let you know. Bye. Frank may actually have done us some good today. We took a few hits, but... Overall, he didn't exactly come off as Mr. Believable. So weird. I thought Frank knew me well enough to know that I couldn't murder anyone. He bought the party line. Well, thank God he doesn't know about Christina. He's so angry with me, so convinced I'm guilty. If he realized we had a daughter... Julie, Frank will never get his hands on Christina, okay? The guy wasn't destined to be a father. I'm so glad you're here. Me too. You can't imagine what it's like to sit here and listen to every dog in Port Charles say how my life should turn out. Oh, you're innocent. And now we're proving Yeah, and by the time I'm out of here, I doubt I'll even remember what it feels like to be a normal person. You were normal? Hey, watch it. Uh, all I mean is ever since I first laid eyes on you, I, you always seemed more than normal. <laughs> Where's my questionnaire? Am I ever going to get to see it? What? Mm, well, you have been pretty good today. If you, um, search through a certain pocket, you just might find it. Mm. <laughs> Read it. Read it. My darling hubby. Nice. <laughs> Uh, this is probably going to suck, but even if it does, tell me it's the best thing since sliced bread anyway. <laughs> I keep waiting for you to decide to abandon ship, but you keep showing up. You must have taken some very severe blows to that as a child. <laughs> whatever the reason, you're sticking around. You're here. That is awe-inspiring. Don't go away. I know you won't. You're pookie. <laughs> uh, well... 
It's the best love letter I ever got. Of course, it's the only one I ever got. <laughs> Still, it's a keeper. And so are you. What's up? Uh, nothing. You sure? Uh, well, it's, it's personal. <laughs> Husbands and wives are allowed to have some secrets, aren't they? Of course. Talk to Locke. Thank you. What's the message? Nothing. Nothing. It's, it's personal. Cast your votes in the Cyber Soap Awards only at ABC.com, part of the Go Network.